Bill Young here from uh, ShopBot. So one of the things that's sort of always been interesting is working with designers. Some of these, you know, there's lots of times, you know, you have an idea and you make it. But it's a little bit different if it's somebody else's idea and you're making it for them. So I work with Jeannie Taylor at ShopBot on a lot of things. And, um, you know, it's usually sort of a, you know, she says, I need a TARDIS or I need, you know, something to give out to customers, handouts, or I need something to do with a Maker Faire. And I'll come up with an idea and she'll say, that's cool or that's stupid. And um, when she finally says that's cool, then I go ahead and make it. And I sort of make it my way and I, you know, I sort of think about it. and Just kind of come up with a, with a system that works for me. But there are times when you're doing something for somebody who wants it done, wants their thing their way. And they have an idea, you know, some kind of a concept. And they may or may not have any real experience with CNC or digital fabrication. So I want to talk a little bit about that. And the reason I sort of come up is that Jeannie and I have been talking about doing some, some odds and ends projects together as a collaboration. And um, she's into baking. She's very, you know, always making cakes and pies and cookies and things like that. And we've seen a lot of interesting rolling pins with things embossed in them, designs engraved in them. And so decided she had an idea for a, for a design. So we decided to see if we could work together on that. And so this is the process. So this is sort of, this is how I come about it as a fabricator when the designer says, I want to have, I want you to make, this thing for me and there's a couple of um, couple of questions that I sort of have to work through in the beginning so the first one is is it possible you know does it involve some kind of weird material that I can't you know that just can't be CNC cut um, is it a shape that isn't just just doesn't doesn't lend itself to CNC cutting you know does it is it hollow does it have a lot of sort of weird details that are just too minute to, to practically do with a CNC machine. Um, and, you know, basically what she, what she had was sort of a, a design, to, a, an outline design, and it would just be cut into a, a shape. And so there wasn't anything particularly extraordinary about the, about the process of making it. Um, it didn't have to be made out of material that I couldn't machine. It didn't have to be made out of steel. It didn't have to be made out of chocolate pudding. It didn't have to be made out of some kind of weird material that, that I couldn't work with. So the other, the next question is, is it practical to do? You know, and I figured it's possible. Is it practical to do with a CNC machine? Um, would it be cost prohibitive? You know, is it just, it take forever to do? Um, you know, that you just take, is it a really like fine detail and things like that that would take 24 hours to cut and only be worth 10 bucks? Um, which is fine if it's just a one off, if somebody just wants this thing. But if it's, if the idea is it might be a project where you're supplying files or it might be a product they'll sell eventually on Etsy or someplace like that, then you have to really think about whether it's a practical thing to do this way or whether it's just make one of them, make a mold, and then just pour, pour some kind of magic goo in it and make a million of them out of your mold. Um, it's sort of the last question though on that is, you know, that I think of is, can the designer describe it in a way that I can, I can use? You know, is it, if they have sort of a vision with a lot of hand waving or can they draw a picture of it? Is there a real, do they have a real design or do they just have a vision? Um, and Jeannie had a design and she could generate something that I could use. She could generate an image that I could use, um, which is a big thing. So it's sort of the next one, and this sort of depends on how busy I am or any fabricator is. Is it interesting? You know, is there something, is it something that would be kind of fun to do or challenging? Um, and it's, you know, if, if you're not very busy and you're sort of struggling for work, interesting gets pushed to the back. But if it's really, you know, if, you've, if you got some, if, if you got a lot to do, something's got to be pretty interesting to, to make it say, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. I'll add it to the pile. 
So that's a, um, and this was kind of interesting. You know, I thought it was something I hadn't done. I like doing index or stuff, turning, figuring out how to do the turning and how to make it work out right. Um, so I, I sort of, just, we decided, yeah, let's, let's try this. So sort of the next kind of couple of steps are, how do I make it easy for me? Um, part of it is getting, getting it in a format that I can use getting the designer to do as much work as possible and much of the preliminary work as possible. So that helps in sort of making it easier, but it also kind of transfers some of the liability for it coming out wrong to them. If you just get a sort of a, a wonky bar napkin drawing and you're interpreting it, it's really easy to get it all done, and they say, that's not what I had in mind. You know, I wanted it, it needed to be the, more like this, and this, I didn't do that. So it was kind of, um, she could give me just what she wanted. And she really kind of didn't want me to, to mess with it too much. She wanted it to be kind of sketchy. Um, you know, not to be circles, were sort of hand-drawn looking circles. She didn't want me to, you know, go into CAD software and make a real circle. Um, so the next sort of question is, is how precious is it to the designer? Do they, does it have to be exactly like that? You know, something needs to be moved a little bit in order to machine correctly. You know, do you have to go back and forth and get permission and, you know, do you have to give them 15 options for every, every change? Or they say, you know, don't change the design, but you can move, move some stuff around. You know, it's not, it's not super precious to them in that nothing can be touched. Um, so that works. Um, and you need to be realistic with my with your limitations. You know, is it something that you can really um, you can do accurately and to their specifications or to their um, so so that they're happy with the results? You know, if, are they expecting you know just this you know Michelangelo's st statue versus just sort of a a wooden rolling pin for making cookies. Um, and I think expectations worked out pretty well on that. So communication's the next thing, going back and forth. You know, you want to sort of, you want to do just enough communication to get the essentials, but not so much that it becomes a pain. So, you know, you get a, you get a drawing from the designer and you say, you know, this will work, this won't work. This is... This needs to be changed when the rat when you wrap around the, the material, these two are gonna overlap. So this has to be moved or it has to be stretched or something like that. And then you say, is that you want me to do it? Do you want to do it? And sometimes they you send it back, they say, I want to do it, and you send it back and they say, Well, this is kind of a pain to do. So they say, You do it. So that's sort of um this this design from Jeannie has been a little bit of both. You know, she's kinda of wants to make sure I don't I don't break it in trying to make it better, but but she also doesn't, you know, she doesn't want to have to learn all the nuances of CNC fabrication just to be able to get a rolling pin. Um, and you want to know whether, like I said earlier, whether it's a project or a product. Um, what's what's the final outcome? Is it something that they're going to want to supply files for um, so that somebody else can do it? Or is the thing the, the outcome? So maybe you'll make more of them, maybe you won't. You know, it's, it's, it's sort of like having t-shirts done in a way in that it's, getting one t-shirt done is really expensive because you've got all that legwork of getting the, photo, getting the artwork ready and, you know, getting, making the screens and all. And so, you know, one t-shirt's a couple of hundred bucks. The, a gross of t-shirts isn't a whole lot more. You know, you're kind of paying for the shirts at that point and a, and a tiny bit of labor. So you need to know what, what's the, the final outcome. Um, so you get all this stuff and you got a design that's right. I've got a, a file that works out just right. I put it. So I cut a prototype. And um, it turned out pretty good. But it wasn't quite what she had in mind. So she modified the design a little bit. There was some really kind of small detail that just would have been really hard. It would have gotten lost in using it as a pin. 
So um, he sent me a version two and sort of went through the process, but I had gotten a pretty good handle on, on the process at that point. So it didn't take a whole lot to, take, to do the second version. It was, it was very similar, but just some modifications, some, some very small detail were made a little bit bigger. Um, it was, she added a couple of tiles along the length of it so that they were repeating but not identical. And I made a, I made a prototype of that, so stuck it, in the, stuck it in a box and mailed it to her. And the cool part about it all is that she took the, the, in the when I sent her the first one, she made cookies with it. And um, then bossed them in the, in the dough, and bossed this pattern in the dough as she rolled it out. And she sent Stuart, Ken, and myself each a box of cookies, which was, which is definitely a value added. Um, we also talked about, she also tried to make a pie using the same pin. And the cookies worked great, but the pie didn't because the, the design was raised and as the, as the sugary goo came out of the top of the crust, it sort of covered over the design. So she said, what about making one where the design is proud of the surface? It sticks up rather than being cut in. So that was the most recent one I did. Basically just reversed, made it like a negative. We had, the original was an any, and these became outies. And the design was pushed on the outside. So when it was rolled out, it made a depression instead of a raised part. With the idea that the, the pie juice would come out and sort of settle down in these depressions. And then glaze in. And I'm not sure if, if she's actually made a pie with that last one. But we're pretty happy with the designs. And um, I think it works out pretty well. So in the next um, video, Jeannie's going to talk a little bit about her take on all this. And then we're going to talk a little bit about, I'm going to talk a little bit about the process of going from a graphic to a box of cookies. What I've had to do and all that stuff. You know, how I've created the file, how I figured out how the wrap works, um, how we how you scale to, to size to fit the circumference of the pin. So. The next one is Jeannie talking about her stuff, her sort of take on working with a grumpy old fabber. And then we'll talk a little bit about the, the nuts and bolts of the process. Stay tuned. Hi there. My name is Jeannie Taylor. I work with ShopBot Tools. And um, I often find myself working on projects that I need to collaborate with um, folks that have other skills. And one person that I end up collaborating with a lot is Bill Young. So Bill Young and I have worked together on many different projects, some of them more successful than others, <laughs> some of them um, with varying criteria and some of them that have ended up nothing like what they started out as. So a lot of times at ShopBot, we're working on projects that we want to do at an event or at a show. Um, sometimes they're display, uh, part of our trade show booth. Other times we're trying to come up with items that we can give away. They could be small, they could be large. And um, we've done everything from um, yo-yos, yo-yos of the regular size, you know, just the small um, handheld yo-yo to a giant yo-yo made out of foam to show sort of the crisscross of capabilities with digital fab. Um, so I'm very familiar with the way that Bill works, and I'm also familiar with the tools that he has, which is fortunate because anytime as a designer, you're working with a fabricator or um, someone who's going to produce the work that you've imagined, you've got to make sure you have a good working relationship. <clears throat> so with Bill, um, I know that he has shop bots. I know that he has lots of different sizes of shop bots. I'm very familiar with the capabilities of the tool and what CNC can do. Um, there's often times where I, um, I don't always know in my design how that will replicate on the CNC. And so he's able to walk me through some of those things. Um, I'm also very familiar with the other digital fab tools and handheld working tools that might be incorporated in a project. So for this project, um, I'm very interested in um, baking and in soft goods. So what I wanted to do, um, of course, after searching Pinterest, because where else do you start, um, had seen some very cool uh, custom rolling pins. 
And I thought, um, it's perfect for the indexer. Like, why not do this on a ShopBot Rotary indexer where we can control the design, we can control the size, and then come out with a really cool end product. So for my design, I wanted to do something that looked handmade. So I specifically made a design that is kind of rough. It's got choppy edges. Um, it looks kind of hand-drawn. And I wanted to try that. And I was working to communicate to Bill that I didn't want him to fix it. So I think that having a, um, a collaboration, you have to define those areas that are either really important to you or that you're okay with compromising on. And in this case, I wanted to make sure that he knew I didn't want him to go up and clean it, you know, clean up all the lines, make them all perfect. Because that's actually part of the design choice that I was working on. So, so far we've, um, we've talked a lot about it. We've played around with some ideas and um, I'm okay with being flexible on the side of what Bill can put together because he's looking at different things than I am. He's looking at accessibility of material. If you were going to take these and produce several of them, how hard is it to get prepped? Uh, from my perspective at the moment, that's not super important to me. I'm looking for the end product that's going to be functional, um, nice to use, that turns out a good result, that isn't a pain to clean. So with this project, I'm pretty confident that we're going to be doing several rounds of revisions. Luckily, Bill, Bill is a very patient guy and um, is willing to put up with the back and forth. So I am fairly confident of what I think is going to happen. But the reality of that's going to be different by the time that Bill does his side of things. Once he's um, mapped out the design, not only flat as the repeat, but then wraps it around the rotary, if he has to make any adjustments, it could alter the way that the pattern is used. So in context of the rolling pin um, project, I'm also very interested in block printing and screen printing. Uh, in this case, block printing is super interesting because I've already got a pattern, right? So with digital fab, it doesn't care. It doesn't mind whether I use that to print with ink or whether I'm going to make impressions in dough. And um, I want to explore the possibilities with that. So I'm looking forward to working with Bill. Like I said, I've worked with him many times. He's absolutely one of my most favorite people in the world.